on dairy. So sorry, it would be not in Portuguese, it would be in English or it could be in French, but I think uh, uh, English would be, will be better in this case. So I want to, this is the agenda. We will uh, start by uh, a marketing uh, presentations of the company, ICL. Uh, YOA rules, what it is a YOA salt, uh, probably you know already a little bit about that, but I want to, to, to explain what it is. And after that, we will uh, jump uh, directly on the fooding, uh, on the fooding uh, preventions by YOA and education preventions by YOA phosphate. So the company, uh, ICL, it's a mining company, so it means that we are uh, extracting from the mines the phosphate so, uh, minerals until the purifications, the transformations to produce phosphate specialties. It's more than 85 years that we are playing a role in the stabilization of protein. So it could be protein for dairy, protein for uh, meat, and now more and more for new protein, uh, plant-based protein, etc., etc. Just to tell you shortly, we are um, almost everywhere. In South America, we have a facility to, to, to produce and to blend uh, the, our solutions to, for the stabilizations. We have also the R&D centers in San Jose dos Campos. Uh, our centers of excellence for dairy in the world is based in Germany, but I would say we have also a lab and production facility in USA. Uh, we have also lab and production facility in China and Australia, and uh, I would say almost everywhere uh, we are covering and we, we are producing phosphate. Two uh, brands you have for dairy, it's Yoa and Beka Plus. Yoa is more for the, uh, for the salt and Beka Plus is more for, for the hydrocolloid uh, solutions uh, for the stabilization. So in South America, we, are, we have two business, I would say the, the liquid and the solid. In liquid, it's milk uh, and all beverages, you, and all dairy beverages you get uh, in, in, in Brazil and processed cheese, we are mainly focused on Rekejao. It's uh, some things uh, using our time, even my time, time to time. Uh, it's really specific uh, to Brazil and, uh, and luckily we have a specific team uh, in San Jose dos Campos, able to, to, to understand the, the needs and the specific needs and the, uh, regarding the raw material and formulations. The model of ICL is fully the technical expertise of the product. Uh, we are not uh, dealing commodities, we are based all our business regarding expertise. Uh, <clears throat> And we are quite uh, predominant in the market uh, in South America with more than 70% of, uh, of the market. The team, so Alfredo Walter, I, I know he is already on in. Uh, Karen, uh, applications manager uh, for Mercosur and Andean. And Juliana, she's, uh, Juliana, she's uh, uh, dedicated for the applications in Brazil and some students. And myself as the global uh, lead. Our technical centers in San Jose dos Campos, you will have a contact, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Just to be, to be short, we have a specific uh, center of, uh, of R&D in Brazil where you can have a pilot, where you can make some development, you can make some training, you will be welcome. For that, you should contact your, the, the sales manager, uh, Fernando. Uh, you, you will have the, the details at the end of the presentations or Juliana. Oh, sorry. So now I will jump in more technical, more details uh, presentation. So sorry, it could be a little bit too, too technical, but uh, I think it's, uh, it's uh, the, wor the world of milk, it's already complex. It's complex because you is not, when we are talking about milk or dairy beverages, we are never talking about pure solutions. It not, it's not sugar in water. It's not Coke, it's not uh, a soda. It's more complex. It's more complex because you have a protein are partially unsoluble, 
they are in colloidal uh, suspension, so it means that uh, uh, is not absolutely not a solution, a, a, a true solution. You have also some interactions and some link possible between two components, the whey and the casein protein, to produce some irreversible uh, denaturations. Uh, and you have electrostatic interactions with all the components of the milk, proteins, different types of proteins and minerals. And all these small words could be totally uh, unsubilized by different actions, different external actions. Could be the temperature variations, could be the pH, could be enzymes, can make also a big, uh, a big destroyer of the, of the stability uh, of the additions of ingredients, for example, color, flavor, proteins, hydrocolloids, cocoa, water. It's all its source of instability and also the chia. So it's complex. It's uh, will to be unstable. So our role is to try to find the stabilizations. So in our toolbox, what we get is your phosphate solutions. They have three main actions. Three main, because it's not only that. Uh, uh, on processed cheese, you have uh, some additional uh, actions of the uh, of, um, of the phosphate of the UR. First one, pH buffering. So how to keep the pH stable. Sequestrations. You will see what it is. The sequestrations, but generally speaking, it's how to inactivate some minerals. Uh, and you will see that the minerals are good for the for the health, but they are not good for the stability of the product and the dispersion. Okay. Let's jump on the pH management. How you are is able to correct and buffer the pH at the optimum of stability. Each beverage, each milk gets a pH of stability. Uh, for milk, I would say the pH 6.6, 6.7, it's often used. But if we are considering high protein uh, beverage, the pH will be a little bit different. If we are uh, talking about a coffee drink it, uh, and dairy, it would be also different. And I would say the optimum of stability uh, should be uh, should be a measure uh, upfront when you are doing a, a formulation. It's not so easy. Generally, we are using the heat coagulations time with one pH. Two, uh, we are changing the pH and we are checking where the solutions is the more stable. But it's not always six point seven. I would say 6.7 for dairy guy, it's where we should do, but it's good for milk. It's not good for all, all, all dairy beverages. So we can reach the pH. So I want to say that phosphate and UR can increase or decrease the pH. Uh, uh, if you already drink some Coke, uh, in Coke, you, you have phosphoric acid and pH is 3.8 and it's due to phosphate, okay? So the YOA will, uh, by managing the pH and by increasing, generally we are speaking about increasing the pH, will induce the maximum of negative charge at the surface of the micellar casein. And MICC means micellar casein, sorry. And so at the, generally speaking, we want to go to 6.5, 6.7. Uh, in terms of pH to have a maximum of negative charge on the, uh, on the surface of the missiles. And when all the missiles get the maximum of negative charge, we have dispersions and we have the optimum of uh, stabilizations. The use of YOA can also uh, prevent the acidifications due to the heat treatment because in heat treatment you have different I don't want to go in details here, but during the heat treatment, you have uh, um, reactions with uh, lactose, you have uh, the balance of the minerals, it's changing. So generally, when you are eating the milk, you have a drop of pH of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, it depends on the compositions of the milk. And by using you are, you are able to balance this, this uh, pH decrease. We can also limit the, the acidifications and also it will avoid the dissociations of the missiles because when you, you decrease the pH of 0 0.2, 0 0.3, you can start to 
makes the dissociations of the cells of the casein, and generally speaking, it's never stable. So when we have a stable pH, it's the first step of the stabilizations. It means that we, will, we can, with a stable pH, we can keep the good color, the good viscosity, we can keep, uh, we can avoid the separations. It's not enough, but it's required to have a good stabilization. Sequestrations, something's really important. You have to know that the solubility of almost salt uh, as calcium, magnesium, so bivalent cation, are decreasing with the temperature. So it means if I have a solution of calcium, uh, calcium, uh, calcium in, in water, if I'm warm uh, eating these solutions, I will, I will reach the point of saturations and, and sedimentations. So you can see the curve here. It's uh, more we are eating, more we are insoluble. So you can imagine when we are talking about UHT, uh, we are eating more than 140 degrees, even if it's one second, we don't care. You reach this temperature, you reach a, a, a point of sedimentation of minerals. So, and at the, at the end, you can have like uh, in the photo on the, on, the, on the bottom here, you can create a lot of deposit. Of course, this deposit is not helping to prevent the protein deposit. We will see a little bit later that we have two types of deposit. One is the mineral deposit, it's this one. It's calcium or magnesium salt, insoluble, and solubilized by uh, the temperature. And the second one, just after that, it's the protein fully. And both are very linked and closed. You will see that. So how it works, how the your uh, works, it's really easy. You have a sodium, uh, sodium polyphosphate. This is a big molecule here. It's a polyphosphate uh, with, with sodium, with two sodium. And where we have sodium, we are able to replace by calcium. Uh, and we say that it's, um, it's uh, the exchange of that. And I realize that my graph is not so good. Nevertheless, I want to say that uh, we are exchanging the calcium, uh, one calcium by two sodium. The capacity of sequestration depends on the UR. You have to know that each UR don't have the maximum of capacity. You will see that we are designing the formulations of UR on, on specific requests of a customer or of a market. Some yoa are very sequestri uh, sequestrating, and in this case, one gram of yoa can make the sequestrations of two, 225 milli five milligrams of calcium, but some are less, okay? And it's really specific and specific to ICL. I want to say that you have no competitor able to produce a big sequestrant of calcium. I would say our competitor are with a lower uh, capa capacity of sequestration. The dispersions, it's also something easy to understand. When we have a pH at 6.5, I already told you that uh, the, the missiles have a negative charge on the surface. You have negative charge and negative charge, you have dispersions. And when we are using phosphate, we are putting in the middle a long molecule also negatively charged at pH 6.5 or higher. It's also negatively charged. So you can imagine you have a protein negatively charged, another protein negatively charged, and on the middle, you put a molecule negatively charged. You have the maximum of electrostatic repulsions. This repulsion, we, we say that it's the zeta potential, uh, is not so easy to measure, I want to say. But, and, uh, but it's, we know that it's at the maximum when we are using polyphosphate. Something's very important. When you are using protein, you have to know that uh, generally speaking, when you are using protein and water, it's very difficult to dissociate all the missiles. So you can check by, uh, size, uh, by the, the, the size analysis 
and you will see a big group normally uh, missiles of casein is 290 uh, or 80 nanometer and here you can see some things uh, bigger if you are just using water and and uh, milk protein or mi milk and and milk protein you have aggregate the aggregation is due to the process of drying if you are using uh, the polyphosphate in your solutions, you will see you, it will you will see the, the, the size of the, of the particles going until the size of the missile. So it means that we are able to to dissociate each cells each from each other, and we have one unit, one missile, one missile casein. Now, just to resume, different actions of your pH, I can increase, decrease the pH, I can keep the pH stable to keep the stability, to keep the color, viscosity, etc. Sequestrations, dispersions, they are the four actions of your when we are talking about liquid application. And we are designing the your uh, Brazil team can design also some specific your Regarding, I would say, what we want. If we want to, to, to balance a very acidic pH, for example, in, with a, a mix with coffee or we mix with tea, in this case, we will focus more on the pH. If we want, if we, if we want to make the maximum sequestrations because we have a, a lot of calcium in the, in the milk, we will design another year. So it's the reason why today we have more than, I would say for beverages, more than 25 uh, different year. A salt. It's not only one product. So, how to prevent the fooling? The fooling. The fooling is something described as two deposit for to get the fooling. So, when you are fooling, of course, it's very important topic for for the productivity because when you are fooling, you are losing uh, some uh, thermal energy. And from one point, you can block your, your, your UHT. So in this case, you should stop, rinse, do a CIP, do a cleaning. And it's a lot of energy. It's a lot of uh, material. It's a lot of money at the end of, of, of the week. So how to improve and to avoid, how to improve the productivity and to avoid uh, this fooling, we should know what it is. And the fooling is already described, I would say, in the literature. You will see that the fooling is already described in two steps. The first step is uh, mineral deposit. It's, the min it's what we said, it's a primary deposit. It's a pure mineral deposit in calcium carbonate, calcium citrate, calcium lactate. Uh, it's a mineral deposit on the surface of, 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 uh, of, uh, of the pipe. So you are creating a first layer of mineral deposit. This first layer, you will see uh, later, will create some turbulence and will create a rough surface where you can start to have a second layer. It's the protein, uh, whey protein, calcium, casein, uh, fooling will, will start on this first layer, okay? And this, I think uh, Guillaume uh, will, will discuss about that because it was a great job that he, uh, uh, he did uh, at the beginning of, uh, of this year. <clears throat> so, how we can use polyphosphate and, and I will describe in, in detail the, the fooling. You have a temperature, even more than 60 degrees, you are starting to make the solubilization of calcium salt. When I'm talking about calcium, it could be also magnesium, okay? So you have this first insolubilization. Remember that the solubility of calcium salt is decreasing with the temperature, first step. You are creating, as you have insolubilization, you are creating a rough deposit on the surface of the, of the pipe. It's the primary deposit, mineral deposit. In the same time, when you are increasing the temperature, you, are, you have reactions on the lactose, uh, and these reactions will create some, also some acidity. Okay, so you have this acidity creating by the reactions of the lactose by the temperature. 
the deposit will do also as you have in the to be to be not too chemical but i want to say that if you have uh, uh, one ingredient out of the formulations you are totally unbalanced the, the equilibrium of the salt in the milk and it will also decrease the pH. So eating means you have the rock deposit, the primary deposit, mineral deposit. You will have uh, the lactose uh, reaction. You will have also the perturbations of the salt balance. All that will create the pH decrease. The pH decrease What's happened when you are putting some pushing some acid on the on the on the milk? You have uh, uh, the elutions of the calcium inside the casein inside the protein is going out, and you see the calcium the ionic calcium increasing. So the ionic calcium is the free calcium. The free calcium is increasing, so you will have more calcium, but the temperature is still high. So you will have more deposit. It's the first cycle. The second cycle, you have this rough deposit. So you are creating also on the surface of the pipe. So you are dis disrupting the laminar flow that you have on the pipe. Normally, a new HD is working uh, without turbulence. But here, with a rough deposit, you can understand that you, 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 will, you will create some turbulence and the flow will decrease in some point. And it's the starting of the second cycle. You have, by the turbulence, you are creating some micro spot of overheating. So it means that uh, in some point of the uh, of, uh, of deposit uh, or on the flow of the milk, you will have more than the temperature that you have set it. It's due to the cavitations, I would say, phenomena. So due to this turbulence. And this, you have more temperature. So you have an over denaturation of the protein. It's, you are, uh, I would say, inducing, you are creating the second deposit. Uh, it's the deposit made, made of calcium and whey, what it was described by the team of Guillaume. Uh, and, and phosphorus uh, is, uh, is creating this second deposit. So you, for us, it's our hypothesis that we have this first deposit mineral, and after that you have a second uh, deposit uh, uh, with, uh, with protein. But we know that in the true life, it could be rather on the same time. And this second deposit, of course, is increasing the boundary layer. So it means that you have much more turbulence and you are perturbating the, the flow inside the UHT. So this is, will create again another cycle. So more turbulence, more micro spot of overheating and more eating until you can block the full UHT. So now, all the poly, all, all the polyphosphate uh, YOA can, can what, what they can do. For, as I told you, we have a good sequestration capacity of your polyphosphate. So first of all, we can, in the first step, we can uh, neutralize the, 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 the ionic calcium and we can avoid this rough deposit. Okay, the second point, we can also buffer the pH, so avoid that the, the de avoid the decrease of the pH and avoid that the calcium is going out of the casein. And the last point, but uh, we, we discover only not so far, but only this year, UR phosphate also can play a role on that. Uh, depends on the pH, depends on the quantity of the phosphate. It's described on the, on the publications of Guillaume teams there, but it's playing also a role. So you can see that phosphate can play a, in different points uh, to avoid the fooling. Just be careful. I don't say that if by using phosphate, you can run uh, two weeks uh, on a row uh, no, 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 you, you can extend, I would say by our experience, you can extend 20% of productivity quite easily, depends on the formulation.
Now the edge relations, it's the second phenomena. The edge relations, it's, uh, it's something also quite uh, interesting because uh, for me, when I have started to, to work on the, on, on the UHT more than 20 years ago, uh, edge relations was very a big mystery. Uh, we tried, uh, I tried by the past to, to make some correlations about the edge relation and, and some criteria as pH, as mineral content, as protein content, etc., etc. All correlations was almost impossible. So just to explain what it is, the edge relations, you see the free bottle here. It's the beginning of the edge relation. Uh, and the edge relations is a change of the viscosity of the milk during the, the storage. So here I'm, I'm talking about storage more than three or six months. You can see uh, a change of viscosity and you can go until the full jellification of your liquid. I saw milk, uh, uh, bottle of milk uh, uh, was totally gel, jellified uh, due to this phenomenon. And today it's almost impossible to forecast edge relations. Normally we know, and Professor Antonio know that, <laughs> Uh, that we can induce, we can force the edge relations. Uh, we can force because we know that, for example, if we have some hydrolysis of uh, biological hydrolysis of the protein, we can force the edge relations. It's described on that. So, how to explain that? Edge relations for, for us, it's the rearrangement of the small casein hydrolyzed by some enzymatic actions. It's, it's one of our explanations for edge relations. So it means that you have a casein, the cell of casein, you have enzymes cutting some part of the casein of the cells, and these, all these small parts can rearrange uh, each with over around the calcium to form a big 3D gel. You will see some growth. So, we defined also in our approach in applications two types of edge relations. We said the chemical cause, generally speaking, it's very fast and is due to unbalanced formulations. Too much calcium, not a good process, too much whey, uh, no pH uh, buffering. Generally, when you try to make a high protein uh, at 10 or, or 12 percent of, of protein without stabilizer, you have high gelations after one or two or three weeks. It's very fast. It's due to unbalanced milk. Generally speaking, we can we can solve quite easily. The second edge gelations, it's a biological cause. And here, as I've explained, it's due to the hydrolysis of the casein by in two small fragments due to enzymes. So you have different enzymes. You have the enzymes of the milk. It's the plasmin plasminogen system. It's already on the milk. You cannot uh, you cannot remove like this. You can make the desactivations of this plasmin plasminogen system. It's you can make the desactivations by pre-eating, generally speak, generally uh, before the homogenizations, we are doing a pre-eating and this pre-eating have a role to decrease the plasmin plasminogen system. It is on the milk. The second enzyme source could be exogenous enzymes. So enzymes bringing by the bacteria. And here we, we, we are not so focused in terms of, uh, of producer of UHT milk. Don't focus on the quality of bacteria because we said, okay, we will have a UHT, so we will kill all the bacteria. So keep the milk for two days or three days or four days, it's rather the same. No, because even at four degrees, you can have some growth of pseudomonas. For example, you can have some bacteria with very slow growth, but they can grow at four degrees and they can produce the enzymes. You don't see any things on the milk. You don't have different odor. You don't see sedimentations. You don't see pH is totally flat. You have exactly the same pH. It's very stable pH. And you are saying, oh, okay, I can wait one day more. 
and you don't see what happens on, on your tank, it could be uh, a growth of this bacteria and production of the enzymes. And these enzymes will make the hydrolysis of the casein, small fragment, rearrangement of a small fragment around the calcium, and you have agitation. See the bottle on the right, it's what we can, go, we, we can have in the liquid uh, milk. Now, I want to, to, to make by, uh, by uh, uh, this picture to explain what, what it is the natural milk. So it's the natural milk at pH 6.6, you have the micelles of the casein, here the blue uh, point here, it's the calcium, it's, uh, it's like a cement between some micelles, Okay, so you have a submissile, it's a small orange uh, uh, droplet, and the missile is a big part. So you can see, as I, I told you, the missiles of casein have a negative charge at pH 6.6. Some positive charges are still uh, here, but the net charge is negative. So if you have a, 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 a missile negative here, a missile negative here, you have a repulsion. But if you have unique calcium, it's the, it's the same as that, but outside of the micelles, if you have unique calcium, free calcium, I would say, floating around that, you will have less repulsions and you can have attractions of the two micelles and you are starting to have uh, instability. Some things to add here, uh, we are saying that the Pre-eating could be good also to, to make the denaturation of, of the whey protein on the surface of the micelles. And one of the hypotheses of that is when we are stocking the protein on the surface of the micelles, we have bigger particles. And these bigger particles don't increase too much in terms of, of weight, but in terms of space. And it's increasing also the repulsions because you avoid that the missiles of casein are too closed. Okay, so it is the natural milk. If I'm doing the heat treatment and proteolysis due to the enzymes, what I will have, I will have a destroyed, more or less a fully destroyed missile of casein due to the enzymes. And I will have also some free calcium here due to the, uh, to the heat treatment. And you can, you can imagine what will be the result. All this calcium will be used as a cement to, to attach, to link each small fragment to each small fragment. And you will create a big polymer, a 3D polymer of casein, whey, calcium, another casein, etc., etc. And this, uh, I would say, rebuilding of network will create a long 3D structure and it will create the jellifications. So here the calcium and the free calcium is playing the role of cement. Okay. Just to explain, now with phosphate, I'm introducing the phosphate in my milk at the beginning. So first of all, I have a full repulsion, but because I, as I told you, you, are neg you have negative uh, micelles, you have a negative polyphosphate, and you, you are increasing uh, the repulsion at the maximum. And the polyphosphate is also sequestrating the calcium, the ionic calcium, the free calcium. So it is the effect when you are using the, um, the, the, polyph the polyphosphate, just to remember the solutions in natural milk, the solutions with polyphosphate, more dispersed. You have the heat treatment and the proteolysis. Of course, the polyphosphate will sequestrate all the free calcium. So you don't see any uh, blue uh, dot free. So you are avoiding to create this mega aggregate of protein, calcium, whey protein. Okay. So for us, we say that the phosphate is not avoiding the hydrolysis. It's a question mark because we have doubt. Uh, we have doubt on that because I would say polyphosphate can have a, an effect on enzymes. But even if you have hydrolysis, 
the polyphosphate VOA can prevent the reaggregations, the rebuilding of the 3D uh, uh, network. That's all for me. Sorry, it was a little bit uh, complex. I hope that uh, uh, you have learned some things on the edge generation and fooding. And for all uh, informations uh, locally, you can, uh, you can contact uh, Ju Juliana. Uh, she's in part of applications group, or you can contact Fernando for sales and probably you are already in contact on that. That's all for me. Yeah, uh, thank you, you Francois. Uh, you are really didactic and explained really well uh, for 